welcome back to Photography for the Rest of Us, a place for those of us who just love learning about photography. I'm Carrie. This is Nora. And today we are taking school pictures. <laughs> Hey guys, so 2020 has meant a lot of changes and one of those things is virtual schooling. My kids right now are both virtually schooling and only one of them is actually going to have school pictures this year because of that. So being the photographer that I am, I figure I'm going to take some formal school pictures of my kids to record the year so that there's some sense of normalcy and I want to show you guys an easy way to do that as well. Here's some of the things that you'll need for this shoot. For this shoot, you'll need a light stand, a speed light, a trigger for your speed light so you can shoot that speed light off camera. You'll need an adapter. So you'll need an adapter so that you can attach the speed light to your stand as well as the shoot through umbrella to that stand. And you'll need your camera with whatever lens is comfortable for you. Today, I am shooting with an 85 millimeter lens. And then if you want a backdrop um, I ordered this one off Amazon for about $15. Um, it's just very basic. You could honestly use a sheet or uh, a wall or really a piece of fabric, whatever you want. You don't have to buy a background specifically. All right, so let's talk about that equipment that I just went over. Single speed light with a trigger so that your camera can use it not attached to your camera. A lot of them come with triggers. Just make sure that you sync it, and it is a little bit of a challenge. Now, so in this video, I'm not gonna talk a lot about the actual setting of the flash. What I'd like you to do is set your flash up to manual. So it should just be an M on whichever one you happen to have. And then just understand that the power setting, one one is the most power your flash can have, and usually somewhere in the 164, you might go even lo uh, lower than that, is the lowest power setting, meaning less light is coming out. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna talk more about just turning up the power or down the power, because all of our flashes are a little bit different, and I'm not expecting yours to look exactly like mine. So with that in mind, a couple of other things. This is the shoot through umbrella I was talking about. This is literally just an umbrella and it's semi-transparent. Can't really see through it, but the light can go through it. So it's semi-transparent. This is very cheap, it's easy. You can get them on Amazon for like eight bucks. I think it's like 20 bucks for a pack of two or something. I don't know, it's not very much money, um, but they're great. They're cheap and easy and lightweight and something very easy to take around with you when you're using your camera off or <laughs> when you're using your flash off camera. I can talk, it's fun. All right, a basic stand. Now the stand, I'm gonna set it up while I'm talking. The stand does not need to be something that is fancy, okay? There are lots of brands on different retail sites, such as Amazon, um, that have light stands. They don't need to be anything fancy unless you're gonna be like out in a windstorm or you're gonna have huge uh, soft boxes or octa boxes on them. With a shoot through umbrella and a speed light, cheap is better. Just go with basic and easy, okay? And then the other thing that really helps with this situation is this. Now let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Ha ha ha. All right. So this is an adapter. Oh, come on, stay focused on there. There we go. Um, this is an adapter, okay? So this is called a cold shoe and your flash actually sits right on here, okay? And then this is where the shoot through umbrella is gonna go through and I'm gonna show you how that sets up. And then it just screws to your light stand on the bottom here. Now without this part, um, a lot of times our speed lights come with, hold on. A lot of time our speed lights come with a foot like this. And this actually screws, here you can see it. It actually screws, come on. And it actually screws onto the bottom of the speed light and then the little hot shoe and it just slides right in there. But for this, because we wanna use that umbrella, we need something to stick the umbrella in. If you don't happen to have an adapter or wanna buy one, um, jury rig it, use some clips, some duct tape, it's all good. Um, you just want to create a bigger light source and that's what we're doing with this umbrella. I'll talk about that more in a second. So setting this up, 
Our adapter goes onto the top of our light stand and you can just tighten it down with the screw. And then our speed light just slides right under that cold shoe and locks in place. Ooh. <laughs> Sometimes locks in place. And locks in place. There we go. I'm gonna tighten that up because apparently it got loose while I was playing with it. And lower it for you guys to see better. There we go. So now we've got my speed light on a stand. Easy enough, right? And I'm gonna use the shoot through umbrella. I'm gonna put that right through that adapter. Okay, right about there, all right? And then tighten that down too. So if you notice the way that we're setting this up, the flash is actually shooting through the umbrella. And what that's doing is creating a larger light source. So the flash, the light source of a flash is like this big, right? And, but the light source of the umbrella is significantly bigger because what happens is the light hits the umbrella and then spreads all over it. And I hate to tell you guys, but bigger is better when it comes to creating soft light. All right, so size matters and we wanna create a bigger light in relation to our subject to have a nice, soft, professional look for her headshot or her school picture basically the same thing, right? So you can totally use these techniques if you want to take headshots as well. All right, so that, I think we're good. That is set up. Let's get our model in place and go through a couple of things to set up before I even touch the camera. Here we go. Okay, so let's start out with getting my lovely model, Nora, set up here. Now this is a really typical setup, right? We've got a background, and like I said before, this is a cheap background. You could totally use a piece of fabric. I got this one for like 15 bucks and I like that it was already modeled. I picked a very neutral color so I could use it for multiple things and you'll see it in the future for things. Um, but it's just a nice, easy background to have in your repertoire. Make sure that you steam or iron it out so that there aren't any wrinkles. Believe me, it's worth it because having those wrinkles uh, will be a pain in post later. You might not see them now, but you will see them later. So this is a very typical setup that you will see. The background and then the model on the stool really close together. And that's the first tip I have for you today is that you want to move your model away from the background. And that goes for any time that you're setting up any sort of background. If you want the background to look a little bit more realistic, move your setup and your models away from the background. So let's do that real fast. Is it, it all the way forward for me, babe? Thank you. Maybe that's a little too far. Let's move back just a hair. That way they can still see us at home. All right, looks good. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is move that model forward of the backdrop. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try to set this up so that you guys can still see her, is I'm gonna put the light actually pretty close to her face. If we stand back here, there is not much of a gap in between the two. Um, I would say about a forearm's length, okay? So not a big distance in between my model and the light. So I think we are ready to shoot. I'm gonna turn on my trigger and then let's look at settings. Now, one thing you really need to know is what your sync speed is for your camera when using an off-camera flash. The sync speed is how fast your shutter can go before you miss the flash, okay? So for most cameras, it's one two hundredth of a second or one one two hundred and fiftieth of a second, okay? So check with your camera on which one that is. You'll know if you're too fast because you'll get a black line in the middle of your image or you'll miss the flash completely. So I'm gonna set mine at 250 to start with. I'm going to be shooting at 2.8 because this doesn't need a very big depth of field and it helps to blur out that background a little bit more. And then my ISO is at 100. So I'm starting at a pretty low setting for my speed light. I have a very low amount of light coming out of it and let's just see what that shot looks like. So pretty, sit up nice and tall for me, babe. Lovely, one, two, and three. Nice. Okay, so as you can see, this is way too dark, all right? So <laughs> we're gonna turn up the power on my flash. Now, there are other ways to adjust this than just flash power. We can move the flash closer or further away, but I like the way we're set up here. We just don't have enough power. So I'm just gonna turn the power up and I think I'm gonna go up quite a bit, probably to about halfway, all right? 
I'm gonna tell you guys right now that photographers don't always get it right the first time and that's totally fine. So if you don't get it right the first time, like don't stress, okay? All right, ready? Sit up nice and tall. Ready? One, two, three. Nice. Ah, oh, so much better. That looks really, really good. I'm very happy with that shot. Her eyes look nice and crisp. Very nice. Now I am actually going to shoot one more time and I'm gonna have to adjust my settings a little bit, but I'm actually gonna open, or, <laughs> but I'm actually going to close down my aperture just a little bit because I want you guys to see the difference between show, shooting in like 2.8 and shooting in say 5.6. Let's go there, why not? Okay. Because she's far away from the background, I'm still gonna get a blur at 5.6, but a little bit more of her hair and her ears are gonna be in focus. And especially for headshots, sometimes that's a look you're going for a little bit more. I know the trend right now is to shoot everything completely wide open, but I'm not a follower of trends and I'm not a follower of that one especially. I think that being able to get more of your subject in focus is sometimes beneficial. So I just wanna show you guys the options and the differences here. So I'm gonna close down to 5.6 and because I'm doing that, I'm gonna turn my power up on my flash. Yeah. Hopefully that works. Okay, ready? One, two, three, big smile. There we go, she is such a good model. Perfect. So this is with a 5.6 aperture and I just like that it shows a little bit more of her features and it, the fall off isn't quite as fast with my depth of field. Option, totally what you might like. Now, the one thing I see in this picture that I kind of am not a big fan of is how shadowy the side of her face is, right? And that's because the light source is only coming from one side. So there is a super easy fix to this. Let me show you. We are going to grab a piece of cardboard. This one is poster board with blue on one side and white on the other side. I'm only using the white side in this. I have a clamp, you can prop it up on a chair, however you want. And I'm gonna put this on the other side of her head. Nice and close. Don't look so sad, what's wrong? Nice and close. Okay. So if you see, we've got the whiteboard on one side and then the light source on the other side. And let's take a shot like that and see the difference. Um, I'm leaving it at 5.6 for the moment because I like it. All right, sit up nice and tall. Ready? One, two, three. Nice, that totally fills in that shadow for me. Looks really good, but because it's still brighter coming from one side, there's still dimension to her face, okay? Now, there's a couple of little tricks that I wanna show you guys before we finish this video. And the first one is, you know how when you go and you select school pictures, you get the colored backgrounds, right? And they charge like six extra bucks for the color. I'm gonna show you right now how easy that colored background is, and it doesn't cost six bucks. If you have a second speed light, all you have to do is set it up behind your subject and point it up at the background. Let's start with a regular speed light and I'm gonna use that foot that comes with them and just set it down on the ground. You can use a stand, you could put it on a box of books, however you wanna set it up, but just so that it sits upright. And I have this set to a very similar power, almost exactly the same power as I do for the one that is illuminating her face. It, I might have to adjust it, we'll see. Big smiles, thank you, one, two, three. Ah, oh, perfect. Now you see in that shot how it separates her from the background compared to the first one? Awesome, right? Super easy. <laughs> so now this is a two light setup. And I know I told you guys one light and I showed you guys one light, but I wanna show you a little bit more, okay? So then the next step here is we're gonna add a green gel. And all I'm gonna do is tape this over the top of the flash that's in the background. And that way we have a colored background and it didn't cost $6. See? One, two, three. Perfect. 
Perfect. Now, I would say that with the gel, we could even turn the power up just a little bit more to get a little bit more green, but you guys get to point and see the effect here. So I'm gonna turn it up a little bit. We'll take one more shot. Okay. Just adjusting slightly. Ready, sit up nice and tall. One, two, three. Perfect. There we go, nice green background. Separated, back. <laughs> nice green background. All right guys, so let's review really quick. I had our off camera flash set up on a light stand with a shoot through umbrella and a trigger on my camera in order for it to go off and a backdrop, but you can use any piece of fabric or whatever you might want for a background. A beautiful, lovely, adorable, and very tolerant model. <laughs> and with those things, we got very nice, very professional looking school pictures very easily. And these techniques can be totally used for headshots and that sort of thing as well. Just having a nice bounce board on one side and then a beautiful light coming at about a 45 degree angle from the side of your subject. So setting up just like I did here. So hopefully you enjoyed our time here with Nora. You'll be seeing a lot more of her as with COVID. I'm trying not to have as many model calls, which means my lovely family will be in these videos helping me out. And Nora, what else do they need to remember? because videos come out every Tuesday and we love having you. Also, don't forget to use our hashtag photos for the rest of us on Instagram so that I can see what you're working on and give you any help. Also, I'm always checking the comments, so go ahead and comment below if you have any other questions or if you just enjoyed it and you wanna say hi. And I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you next week. Bye.